It's the summer of 2015, and I'm enjoying a birthday dinner with my family at the Sandestin restaurant, at the Ocean's restaurant in Sandestin. The toasts are over. The band continues to play a Sinatra classic. And as I lean over to take the second bite of my medium rare filet, I get a sudden sharp stabbing pain in my chest. I get the fright of my life. After all, I'm a not so fully compliant pre-diabetic, borderline hypertensive, and I'm on medication for cholesterol. And here I am at a seafood restaurant enjoying a steak. <laughs> and I'm 270 miles away from my physician. I reach into my pocket and pull out my smartphone, which has attached to it a mobile EKG. Within 30 seconds, I run an EKG and get an instant analysis. Normal. Relieved, yet still anxious, I hit save and send to my physician. It's a few minutes before I get a call back. It's all well, take a thumbs, and let's review when you get back. I just saved $5,000 in ER charges and freed up the ER to focus on real emergencies. That evening, my smartphone made me the CEO of my own health. The future is here. Healthcare in the USA and across the globe is in crisis. We're plagued by erratic quality, unequal access, and skyrocketing costs. The US spends significantly more per capita on healthcare than any of the countries in the world. And when we compare outcomes to 10 of the most developed countries, the USA ranks last. The Institute of Management of Medicine also estimates that approximately 400,000 lives are lost every year through preventable medical errors. If that's the equivalent of two fully laden jumbo jets crashing every single day. If US healthcare was an airline, would you fly Air US Health? Two of the root causes that are driving this ineffectiveness and these inefficiencies are firstly the cognitive limitations and biases of physicians. Physicians require two things to practice optimally, new knowledge and evidence. And they have an abundance of that. There's approximately 1.5 million new biomedical articles published annually. And it's estimated that physicians have to do about 160 hours of reading per week in discipline-specific areas just to stay current. That's humanly impossible. And that's one of the reasons that drives the variation in clinical practice. When Partners, a second opinion company, assessed the records of 330 oncology patients, they had to change the diagnosis in 12% of them and change the treatment in 90% of them. When Cleveland Clinic doctors reviewed medical records of patients, they had to change the diagnosis in 11% of the case and change the treatment in 66% of these cases. It is this variation in clinical practice that drives erratic and poor quality and high costs. But there is a solution at hand. IBM's supercomputer Watson 
has just completed medical school and residency <laughs> and has memorized every single medical textbook, including two complete databases of, of, of online medical databases, as well as thousands and thousands of medical records. In its current deployment at Memorial Sloan Kettering, Watson was twice as likely than physicians to make the right diagnosis and to recommend the right treatment. Watson is now available to physicians and to health systems, and it's just a matter of time before Watson is available to you, the average patient, to help with diagnosis and recommend treatment. Physicians, optional. The second root cause that drives this ineffectiveness and inefficiency is the information asymmetry between physicians and patients. Since the inception of medicine as a profession, biomedical knowledge has been the strict purview of the medical profession. And patients have had no access to this information, making them passive, uninformed recipients of care. Put very simply, patients are at the mercy of their physicians and health systems. But the good news is that we're on the cusp of radical change. We're on the cusp of radical change. There's a gamut of converging technologies in computer science, hardware, software, communication, and medical sciences that's coming together to create a perfect storm that are going to give you, the patient, the ability to not just participate in your care, but direct your care in the very same way that technology transformed the way you book your vacations, file your taxes, or do your banking. Underpinning your elevation to the center stage of your own health care is the convergence of smartphone technology with sensor technology and artificial intelligence, which in effect is the ability of computers to think like humans. There's currently an array of wearable sensors available, about 300 currently available or close to completion, that are able to give you access to thousands and thousands of data points throughout your body. These range from activity levels to emotional status and, and vital signs, and believe it, to continuous lab monitoring, including blood and urine. The convergence of smartphone technology coupled with sensor technology and artificial intelligence is also resulting in a flood of what's called point-of-care diagnostics. These are medical devices that are coming to you as opposed to you having to go to a physician. These point-of-care diagnostics are able to help with monitoring, assessment, and even diagnosis. Smartphones are set to be the doctor's bag of the 21st century. Physicians, optional. About 10% of you sitting in this audience today are confirmed diabetics. Unless you look around, another 20% of you are not aware that you're diabetic or you're on the verge of being confirmed as diabetic. You're in pretty good company because you join 30, 30 million other Americans and half a billion others from across the world. The American Diabetes Association estimates that it costs more than a quarter, more than $250 billion annually to manage patients who are diabetic. The key driver for this high cost is, is, the, is, is the patient's non-compliance and non-adherence to diet, 
monitoring, treatment, and visitations. But a solution is at hand. Google has just partnered with Novartis to release a smart contact lens which monitors glucose by assessing levels of glucose in tears. The University of California in San Diego has just completed testing of a digital tattoo. Both of these devices painlessly monitor glucose levels every second of the day and are able to then transmit these to a smartphone which then transmits the data to a bionic pancreas. The bionic pancreas emits two hormones that control glucose levels, insulin and glucagon. The days of uncontrolled diabetes and hypoglycemia, which is the more dangerous lowering of blood glucose, are now over. Physicians, optional. If you can't resist temptation, like me, and you need assistance in monitoring your intake, there are medical devices that are available that would help manage your carbohydrate consumption as well. About 10% of you in this audience would have had, have, or was bound to develop gastric ulcers. If you were rather unfortunate and had an ulcer pre-1980, you're probably boasting a scar and remember very vividly a bill of approximately $5,000. Fortunately for us, in the early 1980s, Australian scientists discovered that the causative agent for gastric ulcers was a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Subsequent treatment for gastric ulcers comprised a gastroscope, biopsy, identification of bacteria, and treatment with a two-week course of antibiotics. Approximate cost, $2,500. The latter part of the 90s and early 2000s, a blood test was developed to identify the same bacteria. If you tested positive, you were prescribed a two-week two course, two course of antibiotics. Total cost, including physician, blood test, and antibiotics, about $500. Fast forward to 2016. If you're sitting in the audience and have symptoms or signs suggestive of a gastric ulcer, go online. You're able to purchase a breath test for approximately $2. Or you can create, purchase a smartphone-based app to conduct just the same breath test, test plus treatment, total cost under $100, physicians optional. In the next few years, we are going to have tools and technologies available to us that's going to transform the way healthcare is delivered. Technologies are going to increasingly commoditize biomedical knowledge and practices and give you the unprecedented capability to determine your own healthcare destiny. It's really your responsibility to embrace these technologies, become informed, empowered, and liberated consumers of, of healthcare, move from being passive recipients of care where your health and your illness have been managed to becoming the CEO of your own health. Physicians, optional. That should start here and start today. Thank you. Thank you.